Okay, back here again on the Rich Van Tassel channel. It is Wednesday, September 2nd. We are now breaking down the NFC North Division. We've already done the NFC East and the AFC East, so it will be the NFC North today. We're going to start with the Green Bay Packers. Have them going 12-4. and four. Let's see if they uh, have recovered from that disappointing loss in last year's NFC Championship game. You never know with a situation like that yeah, how that could affect the team. I think the Packers have too much talent to uh, let it really adversely affect them that much. But again, that's going to be a factor this year, but we'll see what happens. Uh, it starts with Aaron Rodgers, obviously the defending MVP. Most likely the best quarterback in the league. That is certainly debatable, but you can certainly begin in a conversation with Aaron Rodgers. He's mobile, not as mobile as he used to, but he was injured a lot towards the end of last season, especially in the playoffs. His weapons are Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb. Randall Cobb, a uh, very fast guy, you know, more of the game breaker type guy, Jordy Nelson. A little bit of everything, you know, he's a possession receiver, you know, gold in the middle. He's a bit of a deep threat as well, good hands, you know, can run the sidelines, so those are Aaron Rodgers' best weapons. The offensive line, Brian Balaga at right tackle is probably the best player on the offensive line. Corey Lindsley is a very underrated center. He's solid for the past couple of years now. Doesn't get a lot of publicity, but he's good. If Bacchiari at left tackle is a bit of a question mark, you know, especially on Aaron Rodgers' blind side. For all this line's about average. They you know, do what they need to do. They keep Rodgers up right enough. Allow him to you know, go downfield with the ball. and That's what he likes to do. Also likes to spread him out. He's got Eddie Lacy, uh, former offensive rookie of the year when he was a rookie. A you know, big physical running back and Bruce also has game breaking speed as well. On the defense, you have Clay Matthews, spectacular player, pass rusher. I'm wrong with Julius Peppers. Julius Peppers is getting up there in age, but this guy has shown he can still make plays. Had the huge play against the Cowboys in the playoff game last year, calls him a fumble on DeMarco Murray, which uh, could have been a big game or a big breaker. Could have even resulted in a touchdown, which would have been huge at that point in the game. It was probably the biggest play in the game outside of the Des Bryant. Um, their secondary is probably the weakest part of their defensive unit. As well, you have, uh, excuse me, you have DJ Raja on the defensive line. He's also up there in age, but we have to see where he's going. He still has much game left. The secondary is probably the weakest part of this defensive unit. You have Haha Clinton Dix at safety. He's a good player, solid, you know, serviceable safety. Sam Shields is probably the best corner. Not the biggest guy, not the most talented guy, but you know he makes enough plays and is willing to take the team's best receiver, but the secondary is probably the weakest part. And that's where I see them having a lot of problems this year. They have them going 12 and 4 and winning that division. Now we will move on to what might be a surprise to some of you people. I really like the Minnesota Vikings. Went 7 and 9 last year quietly. Teddy Bridgewater um, was serviceable as a rookie. He you know, showed improvement, made strides. Mike Zimmer was in his first year coach. He, uh, had this defense playing well, so I like the way this team's going. I like the position they're going. Should be a borderline playoff team. It will depend on what they do. Excuse me, early in the year. Um, it usually depends. A couple losses early in the year can make a huge difference between you know five and eleven or nine and seven to make a playoff run. I have them going nine and seven again. We mentioned Teddy Bridgewater making the requisite strides. Adrian Peterson will be back. Hopefully, everything that happened off the field with him is behind him. And he is 30 years old. That is a concern. Didn't play much last season. This guy is also a physical specimen. I don't think that really applies to him. And guys, you know, while it's not common, guys have been affected after the age of 30 or going back. Marcus Allen most notably. On defense, Sharif Floyd at defensive tackle. Very good player. You know, clogs up the middle, good run stop, gets pressure up the middle, which is huge in today's pass happy NFL. Anthony Barr at linebacker. That's great. Anthony Barr, linebacker, coming into his second year. Had a very good season last year. He's going to be stalwart on that defensive side of the ball. And in their secondary, they have Xavier Rhodes, who needs to finally make the strides to be in the top left corner. He's big, has the size and markup to the run receivers, especially Calvin Johnson and uh, Randall Cobb in this division. Terrence Newman has played with Mike Zimmer before. Mike Zimmer was the defensive coordinator in Dallas when Terrence Newman was drafted. He was also the defensive coordinator in Cincinnati when Newman was there. Um, Newman on the depth chart as of today was listed as a starter. I see Newman as more of a nickelback, especially at his age. But 
He's a veteran. He's savvy. He knows how to, you know, pick six, pull, you know, make reads on the ball and come up with interceptions as well. And we also forgot to mention uh, with the offensive side of the ball, Mike Wallace coming over from Miami, game break with speed. He should help Teddy Bridgewater. Is, is Bridgewater far enough along where he can get the ball downfield with a speed guy like Mike Wallace? Well, we'll have to see, but it should help him very much. Um, along with Kyle Rudolph, very solid tight end. And the offensive line, you have Matt Khalil, who is one of the better left tackles in the league. So Minnesota going 9-7 and seven might be a surprise to some of you people. Look for them to be a team that's in the playoff hunt late in the year. I'm expecting that from them this season. We'll move on to the Detroit Lions. Expect them to come back a little bit last year. They were in the playoffs last season, had a good year. Jim Caldwell is really buttoned down the ship following the Jim Schwartz. You know, inmates running the asylum basically under him. Um, and Dominic and Sue was a departure. They're going to miss him in the defense man. Calvin Johnson returning from his injuries. Can he be the Calvin Johnson hold where he's dangerous, needs to get double teamed all the time? Sometimes, as we saw in the New Orleans playoff game a few years back, just double teaming him right off the right off the line of scrimmage with two corners. So if he's back to that dominant, then you never know what this team can do, especially with Matt Stafford getting the ball. Stafford, will the turnovers come back? I don't know. I don't think they'll come back as they did before. I think he's, he might come back to earth a little bit as, uh, as he played off last year. He had a good year last year. Let's see if he can stay consistent. Joy Bellard running back. He's replacing Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush was the running back last year. Uh, Joy Bell was there. Which was a nice change of pace, though, and Joy Bell is going to carry a higher workload this season as they go throughout the year. So it's going to be important to he uh, can pick it up on his own and do what needs to be done in the running game because this team is going to be able to pass the ball. We know that, and they're going to have to run the ball as well. The offensive line, Manny Ramirez at center is a nice addition coming over from the Broncos, along with Riley the Reef at left tackle, probably in the top, you know, 50% of left tackles in the league. Nothing spectacular, but he's good enough on, on Matthew Stafford's blind side. Defensive side of the ball, you have a little Nada, who's been a very serviceable player. Yeah, I'm better than serviceable with the Baltimore Ravens won the Super Bowl with them in 2013. He's going to have the task of replacing Dominic Sue to get pressure up the middle and stop in the run game. DeAndre Levy had a very good season at linebacker last year. The defense all around played very well. So he'll, uh, he'll have to continue his pace at the linebacking core, and Olodiano will have to step up and play some Dominic Sue. It's a nice guy to have. You know, Olodiano has been a very good player in this league, so it shouldn't be too much of a drop-off. Or a drop-off. And then in the secondary, you have Rasheen Mathis, big physical guy, 6'1", that will mark up bigger wide receivers in this league. Uh, he is 35 years old, though, so we'll see if age is going to play a factor with him. Uh, always been a good player, going back to his days in Jacksonville. Had a solid season last year. You know, 35 is not that old, especially for a cornerback. And we just mentioned Terrence Newman. Terrence Newman is 37. So that'll be important to see if Rasheen Mathis can keep the secondary afloat, do what needs to be done so they're not getting burned too much downfield. You know, Matt Stafford, you could be in a lot of shootouts with this team with a weak secondary and having the aerial attack they do with Matt Stafford and Calvin Johnson. And then the last place team, at 5-11, and 11, we have the Chicago Bears. A lot going wrong with this team, just a lot of dysfunction. They have brought in John Fox that could improve that, and they may make some noise because John Fox is a very, very good coach. So with him there under the helm, we'll see if he can right the ship, get everything together, and get a move in the right direction. He is a defensive mind, though, and they have Jay Cutler at quarterback. Um, Mark Tressman was the coach for the past couple seasons. They were expecting him to really take Matthew Stafford's game to the next level. It didn't work out, or not Matthew Stafford, pardon me, Jay Cutler. Really, we expect him to take Jay Cutler's game to the next level. Um, so with Cutler, a lot of turnovers. You know, we all know about the arm strength. We know about the physical tools, the size. He can whistle the ball with the best of them. Decision making is a problem. You know, his temperament is a big problem. We've seen him get into a rough as a lineman. It just, it just doesn't seem like he has everything together to be a top white quarterback. Except the contract, the contract certainly is with uh, putting him in that class, but that's the only way because he's not the quarterback that Chicago needs to win. He's just not there. They have lost Brandon Marshall, who had a good rapport with Jay Cutler, one of the guys who did. 
We'll be looking to replace him with uh, Alshon Jeffrey, who's been on the team. Eddie Royal as well. Jefferson is a big guy, or Jeffrey, Alshon Jeffrey is a big guy like Brandon Marshall was. You know, can be tough to cover. That's why you need uh, these big corners that teams like the Lions have with Machine Mathis and the uh, Vikings have with Xavier Rhodes. Big cornerbacks are able to line up a guy like that. So we'll see if he's able to break press coverage and do well in the passing game. Matt Forte is only 29, so he still should have at least a few couple, a few more years left. He's always been productive rushing and receiving the ball, so he's going to be their main, their main stalwart on the offense, the offensive side of the ball. Excuse me. He's a good player, and they'll need him to be big because this offense is weak. The offensive line, Kyle Long is their best player, and he's not even that good when you think about it. So we'll see if that pressure gets to Jay Cutler and it causes him to lose his temper at times. And if he's under pressure, you know there's going to be mistakes. It's just the way it is with Jay Cutler. He's a mistake-oriented quarterback. And you got to watch out for that. He'll get you killed every time. That's the, the defensive side of the ball, they've improved their secondary with intro role. Solid pro. Also had a career at safety. 32 years old, not too old. You know, still has at least one two, maybe three good seasons left, if that, I mean, he might be even more than that. So I don't want to sell him too short on trouble. He's always been a solid player. So you expect he's going to solidify that back end, be a leader on that defense, which they will need. Tracy Porter, cornerback. We all know about Tracy Porter in the Super Bowl, picking off Peyton Manning. Always been a ball hawk. He's a good cover guy, too. So he's going to be good for that secondary. Allen Ball, more, you know, at the nickelback. Ball's been a journeyman. Serviceable, you know, you don't stick in the league as long as he did as, as a journeyman unless you have some sort of game to go with it, but he's nothing spectacular. And then on the defensive line, you have Jeremiah Ratliff and Jared Allen, two guys who have been, you know, pro bowl players. J, J, Jeremiah Ratliff, no longer Jay Ratliff, as he was with the Cowboys. In the middle, always been good in stopping the run, gets pressure up the middle. Is 34, though. So is his play going to dip, or is he going to be able to keep up the pace? He's had throughout his career. He's been a very good player throughout his course in the NFL. And Jared Allen, also 33 years old, good pass rusher. I expect him to get sacks. I expect him to be in double digit sacks. I just don't think he'll be the menace that he was in his Minnesota days and Kansas City days prior to that. So don't expect much from Chicago this year. I have him going 5 and 11, same as last season. So we'll give you the recap. We have the Green Bay Packers winning this division at 12 and 4. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, obviously spectacular player, going to be in the MVP discussion again, may even win it again. His receiving core with Jordan Nelson and Randall Cobb. Jordan Nelson, the you know, do it everything. Randall Cobb, more of a game breaker. Also, Eddie Lacy at running back, good player, big physical guy, tough to bring down. So he's going to be heading that rushing attack, and the offense should play very well. Even with, uh, you know, not a suspect, but uh, average offensive line, Brian Bulaga. And Corey Lindsay was very underrated there. David Bacchiotti left tackle was the biggest question mark on the defensive side of the ball. Secondary is the weakest part of the unit. Um, Clinton Dixon safety, Sam Shields is the best corner. Solid, but nothing spectacular. And uh, Julius Peppers, even at his age, I expect him to have a big game of playing that piece as well. Rush him off the edge. Minnesota Vikings, a bit of a surprise team this year. For Teddy Bridgewater, who continued to make strides in his development, along with Adrian Peterson, we'll see if he can come back from our last season off. Be the Adrian Peterson we know. I expect that the guy's in great shape. And if he didn't run that much last year, you have to figure he'll make up for it this year. I mean, he didn't take the hits last year. Even at 30, this is a guy who I would expect to have big years at 30. And then on the offensive line, Matt Khalil, one of the better left tackles in the league. Defensively, should be good. Sharif Floyd at no tackle, covering uh, off the ball in the running game and pressure up the middle. Which would be big against a team like the Packers. Anthony Barr, second year linebacker, good player on his way up, should be a star in this league someday. And then we have Xavier Rhodes, big question mark. Is he going to take the next step to the elite cornerback status? Has the size, has the physical ability to do so. Terrence Newman, who again is listed as the starter, look for him to be uh, more of a nickelback, you know, being savvy, reading quarterbacks, taking chances to get the ball. Detroit Lions. Departure of Indomitian and Sue. We're looking for them to take a step back. We'll see if Calvin Johnson can come back from the you know, injury plague season last year and be the dominant player. We all know he can be. Uh, Manny Ramirez, good addition on the offensive line at center right underneath. Average left tackle. You know, 
if you don't protect your quarterback, you're not going to win. I think you can protect Stafford enough. We have to go with seven or nine taking a step back, even with Lord and Nada coming in to replace and Dominican Sue on the defensive side of the ball, defensive line. And DeAndre Levy, one of the better linebackers in the league. Rasheem Mathis, always been a serviceable pro, good cornerback. His age is going to be a question mark. And we have them going seven. Chicago Bears, 5-11, and 11. not going to be their year. Jay Cutler, injury problem, especially behind that shaky offensive line. You do have Kyle Long, but that's about it. Uh, departure of Brandon Marshall, who was Jay Cutler's favorite weapon, is going to hinder this team a lot. You see Alshon Jeffrey, a big guy like Brandon Marshall, will step up. Eddie Royal, speed guy, is going to make noise in the offense. Cutler's going to get the ball, but he's going to give the other team the ball as well, so. Uh, John Fox, very good coach. That might be good enough for you know a few more wins than five. We'll have to see what happens though, in that regard. On the defensive side of the ball, the best unit is their secondary. Improved with Antrell Roll and Tracy Porter. And uh, Jared Allen and Jeremiah Ratliff on the defensive line. We'll see how their age goes, and we'll see. They still have a lot left in the tank. So that is the NFC North breakdown for you. On Thursday, September 3rd, we will be going over the AFC North, this was the NFC North, so we're going over the AFC North come Thursday, September 3rd. So tune in then and uh, keep following. And we'll have all the divisions done before the start of the season, so we're moving on to the AFC North yet. Yeah. Thanks so much.